Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we are now having a talk by Alde uh, about fast and effective, don't notice the F, application <laughs> design live. Um, welcome, Alan. coming I think um, and I say I think because I think I <laughs> set myself up for a fall here but I proposed this talk about wouldn't it be fun to do some live design on stage and I was just sat there uh, anticipating this talk thinking what have I done <laughs> so this could go horribly wrong and if it does well I guess that'll be entertaining in some way but, um, yeah, but seriously, um, I wanted to do a talk about how to design applications for GNOME. Um, this is something that those of us on the design team do all the time, time, and it's something that you know application developers do a lot themselves. And I've recently been working on resources to try and make that easier for people who don't have as much experience or who don't describe themselves as quote-unquote designers. And um, I, I put those kind of hypothetical kind of quotes there because, you know, we have a lot of developers who are also designers in the, in the own project, and we've, we've always tried to, to support them and give them the materials that they need. So, so that's the first thing I'm going to try and do in this talk. Uh, the second thing I wanted to do was just going to show you a little bit how we work in the design team. Um, when I speak to developers, they kind of see it, sometimes think it's a bit of a mystery, or like when I start sketching things in English, they get terribly excited and want to see what I'm doing. So I thought I'd maybe kind of expand that to a grander scale. So we'll, see how that, we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk a bit about a design process. Then I'm going to talk about the, the, the human interface guidelines, and then we're going to get to get onto the, the car crash that will be the, the live demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, design process. Um, when you do design work, you should be following some kind of structured design process. Uh, I use the word structure <laughs> tentatively because it doesn't have to be that structured. But um, having an idea of what kind of process you're going through is kind of key to design. And if you don't have some kind of design process, really, I don't think you are doing design as such, really. Um, so in the, the GNOME design team, we have a, a, a particular kind of design process that we tend to use. It's, it's very lightweight. It's very loosely structured. but it, it is a process nonetheless, and it is and it's, it's kind of critical in helping us to, to do the work that we do. And um, I'll, I'll go through the, the steps in this process in a minute. But before I do, it, it's worth saying that while we do have our own design process, and while there are many different versions of design process, um, they do all have some fairly kind of common features. And I would say that this process it has those key features that you'll find in others. So it's not all that, all that unusual. Um, so the first step, uh, whenever you do design, is to define your goals. Think about what it is that you want to be designing. And if any of you out there are a developer and you've got an idea for, a, for an application that you want to produce, um, I know the temptation is to get, get running away with it straight away to think about how it might work or what it might look like, you know, what will the UI be like. And my advice to you at this point is stop. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, the most important thing about design process is to spend a period of time thinking about what your goals are. What is this application going to do? And um, 
the aim within this process is to try and come up with a, a short list of um, kind of coherent goals. And um, ideally, those goals should be user-centric. So you, they should be written from the point of view of the user. Um, like what do you want to enable users to be able to do? What kind of experience do you want them to have? And these are the kinds of questions you should be asking when you're, you're coming up with your goals. And the reason why goals are so important is that it enables you to focus your design. Um, you know, we all know this mantra, do one thing and do it well. And that is the crux of the most good design. You know, um, the trap when you're doing your own design work is to try and do too much. Try and throw so many things in there that what, it, what you're doing is no longer coherent, no longer has a clear audience, it's no longer easy to use. And so thinking about your goals enables you to, to spend some time defining your focus. And that often involves deciding what you're not going to build as much as what you are going to build. So it's very useful alongside your list of goals to have a list of non-goals and also to identify any constraints. This can be very useful. Like those constraints could be in terms of the technology you're using, the resources you have at your disposal. Um, but those are very useful because, again, they, they enable you to specify what it is you're not going to do. Uh, the other thing I'd say about goals is to be careful, keep, keep an eye on your level of abstraction. Um, you, you don't want to be detailing every little thing your application is going to do. You don't want to list every piece of functionality that it's going to have. Um, you want something that's reasonably high level that will give you flexibility as you go on. Um, and you don't want to you don't want to overload it. So you know good goals are things like don't require expert knowledge from users or allow users to easily discover content. Uh, things like this that can be they're generic enough that they can frame your later design out. So that's the first stage, goals. Um, the second step in your design process is um, exploration. So this is the research phase. Uh, so note that you're on to the second stage of your design process. Spent all this time thinking about goals. We still haven't even thought about UI. This is important. So the second stage is exploration and research. So th this can take all kinds of forms. Um, it can involve uh, user research. Um, it can involve uh, looking at relevant art, look at, at other solutions that have been uh, created for the same, for the same problem space. And this is something, if you're familiar with known design, you'll see we do a lot. All our design pages have uh, screenshots and lists of applications that do similar things, and um, you know this, this, this. You can make as much of this stage as you want, but you should always do something, right? You should always research a problem space, and as you're doing research, you should always be evaluating, particularly when um, you're looking at existing pieces of software. What do you like about them? What don't you like them? This will inform your later design. And the third, the third step in this design process is the this is the actual point at which you um, you put pen to paper and you start to think about UI and how the thing is going to look and what it's going to do. And um, when you do this, um, they op you often see diagrams of a kind of funnel. So you you, you start off uh, fairly wide uh, with different concepts and ideas. And then as you go through this process, you progressively narrow it down. So you're exploring different concepts, you're throwing things away, you're trying out ideas. And it's only by going through that process that you finally arrive at some kind of finished design. So I would, I would very much encourage anyone who's doing design work to throw away their work and throw it away later. Um, this is one of the points of design. We can throw kind of mock-ups away a lot more easily than developers can throw code away. So that all sounds very simple. It's a it's a, a, a three a three step process. You you define what you're going to make. You kind of explore 
the, the problem space, then you design something. It can be easier. The problem is that this is all a lie. This is not how it works at all. Um, the, first, the first reason it's a lie is that the process isn't linear at all. Um, so I kind of put them in a circle. But, you know. <laughs> you should always be going back and forth between these. It's like a game of ping pong rather than a step. So the obvious one is that once you've done some research, you're probably going to want to rewrite your goals. And uh, once you've tried some ideas and turned them away, then you're probably going to want to go back and do some more research. And that may cause you to rewrite your goals again. So although this is a very nice schema, in real life it doesn't work like that at all. I, I find it kind of useful to kind of go through this the first time very quickly, and then the actual kind of work of iteration. Yeah. The other reason this is a lie is that um, once you have your design, you've got your neat mock-ups. Um, can I ask a question during or uh, Yeah, 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 go. Okay, can I? Does it work? Turning on. Okay. okay. Um, so I don't know if you, but like during the definition phase or exploration, like do you sheet a lot? Like I find myself sheeting a lot, like while a lot of researching, yeah, I'm starting I to sketch it off. Like, I would strongly recommend pen and paper. And I don't know. No, I, I think, I think most designers like, have a book like this, just full of kind of things that they like to throw away. But I'm, I'm more curious. Like, do you, do you have to like try to hold yourself back from starting to to draw? Yes. Like, as you explore. Yeah. Okay, that that makes two of us. That's yeah, good. Yeah, good yeah. to hear. That's <laughs> yeah. So resist the, the the urge to draw. Um, yeah. So the and the second reason that this is a a lie is because that. Once you have your nice neat mock-ups and you're all done with your design, you're not done. Like it doesn't. This isn't a three-stage process. Like after this, then development starts and like coding begins, and you're still doing all of this, and it never ever ends. So like it's a process without an endpoint. So yeah. Um, so you're not going to be able to see this at all, but um, it's always kind of interesting. Um, this is a screenshot of one of our design pages from the, uh, the wiki, and it describes uh, the design for the new news app. And you can, I've kind of broken it down so you can see that the way the page is organized reflects this process I've described. So it looks like you have your objectives, then you've got your relevant tasks, which are your research, and then we've got the design at the bottom. But, um, so, one of the important things about this is that although you're continually bouncing between these stages of the process, the actual uh, linear narrative, what you try to do is you try to keep it coherent. So even though your process might not be coherent, the kind of story you're telling about the, the design should be. So ideally, there should be a very clear relationship between the designs, the objectives, and the research that's gone into it. So it's kind of nice to think about it almost as an act of storytelling. You're, you're, you're writing a story as to how you came up to a um, came up with a particular solution to a problem, but uh, just because the, you read the story in a linear fashion doesn't mean that you have to write it in a linear fashion. Okay, so that was a very quick primer on design process because I've got to actually leave time to actually uh, do some design. <laughs> um, <clears throat> The other thing to say uh, is that uh, yeah, design is really hard. I um, I think it takes most people who do design work kind of years of practice to get good at it. I know that was certainly my, my experience, and I'm sure there are some naturals out there in the world who are just good at it from the day they were born. But I suspect that most of the people who think that about themselves are wrong. So <laughs> that's something to bear in mind. Um, so it takes a lot of experience. And the other thing, reason why design is hard is that you can't do design in a vacuum. Like you need, you need a kind of language with which to design. You need frameworks, you need resources. And um, you know, most professional designers through their careers will you know, develop this. Like if you're familiar with the work of a famous architect, for example, you will see that they've developed this language over the course of their career. And that's what enables them to do design. You know, they're not starting from a blank page with every new building. They're uh, drawing on their experience and 
recombining components and ideas from other, from other projects. And if you, if you do try to throw yourself into a design project without having that language, without having that framework, then it's impossible because every small question you're asking yourself becomes a design project in its own right. Um, so my advice to someone doing design work is, you know, first of all, practice, but also you, you need to find a kind of, you need a framework. You need to establish a framework to work in. And thankfully in Gnome, we have such a framework, um, and that is, that is the HIG, right? So that is our, that is the known design language. That is our framework for doing design. Um, so, uh, those of you who, uh, who are familiar will know that um, the GNOME, GNOME 3 has a HIC now, we've had it for about a year, and the HIC kind of codifies our experiences and our design practice into a kind of framework that hopefully anyone can pick up and start to use as a design resource. And I've, um, I've recently been spending a bunch of time updating this, so we're going to have a fairly major update to the, the HIG for the next release in 3.18. And I'm going to try and just walk you through some kind of interesting aspects of the HIG, if I'm able to. Yeah. So this is, this is the uh, HIG as it exists in Git Master today. So it looks a little bit different from um, the, the existing one. And um, this is the kind of structure of it. And um, you can see that there's like all these kind of boring kind of guidelines down here, like how to write a label, how to use like capitalization, or guidelines on that. How to use icons, which icons to choose. Uh, all this useful stuff, but these kind of rules of the road aren't really the main thing about the HIG, they're useful, but the main thing is the, this, is the patterns. So the HIG is developed as a, as a kind of pattern library. And um, you can see some of these patterns labeled here in this kind of this graphic here. And um, the way we constructed it like this is partly so that it can grow over time. So each, each pattern is a is a solution to a kind of common problem that can be reused. And each one has been developed over a kind of length of time and has been refined over a period of time. So some of these patterns aren't things that we, um, they don't reflect kind of the, the original idea that we had. They, they've evolved as we've gained experience and by documenting it, we're hopefully passing that experience into you. Um, and the idea is the way you use these patterns is that you, they're kind of like the, the building blocks for design. So you can see there's the core design patterns, which are the ones that you're going to see most frequently, and the supplementary patterns. And we're hoping that this will kind of expand over time. It's, it's, the patterns are meant to be an indication of some of the possibilities that you can have when you're creating an application, rather than all the possibilities. And we're hoping that as people innovate, we will add to the pattern library. Uh, one of the best good example. So, and one of the critical things about each pattern is that everyone has this when to use section. So, the idea is that as you construct a design, you'll, you look at the potential patterns you could use. And the HIG provides you advice on when it's appropriate to use each pattern, and also potential alternatives. So, um, say like if we go to uh, in-app notifications, it'll say, you know, this, this is when you can use an in-app notification, but you could use a standard notification, or in particular kinds of situations, you might want to use an info bar. And it tries to differentiate the different options and describe which context each each one is good to use. Um, yeah. So that's the hit. Right. <laughs> uh, are there any questions so far before this gets messy? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, do we need the mic? Yeah, it's going. <clears throat> My question is, uh, how does uh, the um, design process, uh, how does the scale of the thing you are designing impact the design process itself, whether you are designing an app or just a feature of an app? I'd, I'd say you can go through a, you know you can go through a design process for individual features and depending on what the feature is I mean you want to do it for everyone but you know if it's a relatively complex one then you should certainly be looking at the objectives doing your research trying ideas throwing them away so, yeah. and I should say that when you're going through this design process for the first time it's a good idea to Try and focus on the core features of your of your design rather than trying to design everything at once. Part of part of the point of looking of spending time on your objectives is to identify the most important things about your application and focusing on those first rather than you know trying to design every tiny detail. Um, but I'll I'll go on to that. <laughs> okay, so um, case doesn't perform so well on this side, kind of display. But, uh, right, so um, one of the slightly unfortunate things about a uh, design process is that mostly it's about ideas. So you might have been coming here to, to see a live demo that involves lots of graphics work, and hopefully we'll get onto that. But actually, the most important part happens with pen and paper or with a notepad. <laughs> and the most important part about the design process thinking behind it. Right. So I'm going to try and run through an example of design process really quickly. So it's not going to produce the best quality design you're ever going to see, but it's hopefully going to demonstrate the process. And because I wanted to do this live, I've been trying really hard not to think about it too much. So, <laughs> um, so this morning I came up with the idea of uh, designing an app for um, book recommendations, because that was something I was going on holiday soon, need, I need some books to read when I go away. So this is something I've been thinking about. How, how do I get book recommendations? I know, you know there are plenty of online services that do this for you. But I thought, what, what would it look like if you had a nomad for this? So the way I would go, I've got goals. Okay. So, and, and I'd really love it if you checked in with us, by the way. So the obvious thing is we want recommendations for books. And you know, uh, what else? Different genres. Different and genres length. and types, yes. Like length? Type. Genre. Should maybe take into account books I already read? Based on reading history. So, yeah, so we probably want a separate item for that. So, record. It's probably worth thinking a little bit about what, what, what recommendation means, I guess. Like if recommendation is one of the key goals, then we need to, we need to kind of study that a little bit. Like what, what is a recommendation? Alan, can I ask you to read out loud what you're writing? Because I'm not sure if it's oh, if we're going to well, be able to read it in the video. You can increase the font as well. Yeah, that yeah. works. Is that better? Bigger. Bigger, 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 <laughs> bigger, bigger. That's great, thank you. Okay. Um, so we're kind of saying recommendations based on, uh, based on what you've read. Also maybe your favorite books. And also what was definitely not your favorites. Yeah, <laughs> based on tapes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Based on what your friends have read. Based on what your friends have read. Based on what your friends have read. Okay, 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 okay. 
availability. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and of course, recommendations might change over time, I guess, because new books are always coming out. So, um, and that kind of makes me think, well, you know, I think the best sites, uh, those where they offer recommendations, offer a kind of dynamic kind of in, like, experience, right? If you go onto Netflix, it's not just uh, a static list of things, they're always highlighting new things. So we could think about that as maybe one aspect of the experience we want to pro provide. So dynamic recommendations, so, new books, featured books, trending books, Critics. classics, price, classic, sale, cheap. Because some books are forbidden in some countries. Yeah. I have a question for you. So we are doing here this live demo, and I don't, I don't remember you talking about the scope of the application because it started as a, a book re recommendation app, app. Yeah. And now it's turning more on a social. I don't know, a social network based on books and or your friends, I don't know. It's, it's kind of changing yeah. the scope of the application. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it supposed to happen? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, okay, so non goals. <laughs> this is where it gets hard work. It's easy to think of things that it should be. What shouldn't this application do? You should not be able to read books through it, possibly, yes. if not that is a second uh, separate application. Yeah. Is it a bookstore? Probably no. not. Yeah, it wasn't hard. Not a messaging. Not, not, not Be invasive of your privacy, possibly, if you read only like very terrible books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that could be a feature as well, like private read, private. Oh, can you do that? You can't do that. Can you? Yeah, right, yeah, okay, okay. Fate of Grey fan, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, but you're right, I mean, um, I mean, one thing that we could say is that we want to limit the scope of the, the social networking functionality that we have here, because we don't actually probably want to build a social network. Um, so, um, could, um, One thing that tends to happen with these things is that they expand to uh, movies, uh, yeah, plays, and you know, like you end up with like, yeah, buying a hammer on Amazon, right? Yeah. Instead of books. <clears throat> Magazine. Oh, yeah. 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 Articles. It's for books. Okay. 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 So we've quite quickly got um, some notes here on the kind of things that we'd like to have in our application that I'm about to design for you. Um, Alan, quick question. Yeah. I guess you usually do this by yourself. How does it feel to do it with 80 people over a server? I'm, I'm very relaxed right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are we happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next stage would be to do some, some research, right? So the obvious thing that we might do here is uh, think about our own book reading habits. Like, how do we find out about books? Like, uh, what are the best sources of book recommendations that we have, and what kind of books would we like to, to find? Charity shops. <laughs> That's not useful. Um, I know one thing that I often do is I look at prize winners, so like I often follow the Booker Prize, for example, so we could um, put that on here, like prize winners. I've seen customer reviews. Or right, 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 reviews. Or would those be like um, reviews from other other users? I guess they could also be. Yeah, like from papers and whatever else. Yeah. Based on like you always have one friend who doesn't have like really excellent taste in books. <laughs> That's 
Okay, so on. social capital? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you don't have to write it up. So we can come back to this because we're about to do some research. <laughs> no, not this. Yes, this. So um, during one of the talks earlier, I just did some, I grabbed some screenshots from the net of apps that do similar things. Uh, at the top, we've got um, Goodreads, which you can't see very well, but um, that's the best I can come up with. We have one here, which is nice, uh, nice uh, visual style, I think. It could be something that we might want to emulate, but it's got the kind of it's got that kind of a collection thing going on. So it's like a bookshelf. It becomes that kind of changes the experience slightly. We might want to think about that. Do we want this to be somewhere where you kind of have your bookshelves and you're very proud of all the books you've read and you might want to share your collection with other people? But I mean, like, yeah. But what kind of person do you create it for? Like, what what kind of style do they like? I mean, this looks a bit tacky, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. So the good thing about the visuals as well. I could find out for you. Um, oh, you know? Shafari. Oh, wow. Okay. Got a library thing here. And we're starting to see a pattern like most of them have a kind of a grid of books with titles, which, you know, we might want to think about the advantages and the disadvantages of that approach. Obviously, this one has tabs at the top, this has a sidebar. Um, finally, we've got um, something called GetBlue, which uh, I discovered is for reviews of all kinds of things, not just books. So this is the kind of example of something we maybe don't want to do. It's about DVDs and TV. And also, I thought this image was interesting because they have user profiles where you can show how many books you've read and how many reviews you've had. And that kind of thing. Right, exactly. So maybe we don't want, maybe we do. And the other thing I stuck in here was uh, Spotify, which isn't a book reader. It, it doesn't recommend books. But the reason I threw this in here is because it's similar to our, to our app in one respect, which is that there's a huge collection of material on there. And then you can take portions of that material and add it to your own. So you can see here they have this kind of section, which is your music. So there's this idea of there being a kind of library of stuff and then a subset of it, which is yours. Uh, and so I thought that might be a little interesting. We forgot to say whether the application was for paper books or electronic books, or both. both. Yeah? OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan, uh, yeah. can you repeat comments? Because uh, that it's it's hard for me to pass the mic around. So sure, sure, okay. I'm just gonna use it to make annoying remarks like that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Fabiana. So, is there anything else that jumps? Out? I mean, this is very quick. You would obviously want to spend a lot more time on this research stage than we're doing here and now. And I think you know, doing research into reading habits and you know kind of lived experience of reading and what it means to people and all that kind of thing could be very interesting. But just on this very cursory piece of research, is there anything that that jumps out to people, things they like about these apps, things they don't like? Well, there's one thing, showing only the, the, the cover is not very accessible <coughs> because if you're using a screen reader, you can't actually read that or if you need bigger text. So, I do that. I have to have the cover, and then under the cover, the actual name of the book. Okay, so we can add accessibility to our to our list of goals. I think that's. Do you know websites have alt text for the images, so the screen reads the alt text. Yeah, you can have alt text. That wouldn't work so well in a high contrast mode, I suppose. Like, yeah. That's something that you might want to think about a different treatment for high contrast. But, yeah. The thing is, even without screen readers, some books have covers that are really hard to read. Not like even for like people who don't have any disability or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so we've done a little bit of reading. Uh, so now it's time to go back to our goals. So it's this. Right, I've got ten minutes. Um, so. Um, <laughs> 
So at this point, what we do is we go back to our goals and we rethink them based on this evidence that we've already got. So to our, book, to our goals, we could add um, um, visual <coughs> collection of red books, for example. That could be a, a nice goal to have. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Sorry? I mean, if you've read them already, in a way, right? Like, right. I know how this looks that Okay, yeah. So that's know. a good point, right? Like, now we're expanding the, the goal. Like, do we have a tension between uh, visualizing a collection and recommendations? We probably do, because when you fire up this app for the first time, what you do you want to see? see? Right. Okay, so let's go, let's go with that, and let's put this um, into non-goals instead, then. Right, so not for PC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and, and the idea of course is that this will take some time and you go back and forth, round and round and round, and we've got less than 10 minutes and I've still got to finish this application. So, Linkscape. So, um, if you're doing design work, I would not recommend, and you haven't used Linkscape before, I maybe wouldn't recommend that you use this approach. Uh, Paper's really good. It's very accessible. Like it's, it's it's very cheap, and you know you can tear it up and throw it away and stuff. So that's very good. But Inkscape is what we use, and I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about how we work. So Inkscape is it, and um, I have a bank sheet here, but uh, I do have some apps that I prepared earlier. Um, so this is a kind of Usually when we're, you know, this is the point about patterns, we, we never start from scratch, we're always reusing what we have before, because that makes it easy. Um, so this is a kind of collection of materials that we have. So um, I guess the first thing to decide is, do we want to use a, a grid or not? And this is the point, and so what you might want to do at this point is go back to the HIG, and we'd look up, well, here's the pattern on grids. Do we want to use a, a grid like those other apps? And it says, uh, it is best suited to content that has a visual component, like a book cover, possibly. Um, and it says, uh, you know, if it doesn't, then you might want to use a list instead. It says you can also combine lists and grids, and that can be useful if you want to provide more information. So we're already thinking, well, maybe you want a list and a grid. Um, and it has guidelines for how to, how to construct the grid. It says that thumbnails should be unique. Tells you what happens when you select on an item, all of these things. So, let's grab a grid. We already have all the little bits and pieces here, so that's kind of useful. So, here we go. <laughs> so, what's the first thing that we want to see when we when we load our application up? How's this whole thing going to work? Um, probably want to be thinking about first time experience, right? First time you run it, it doesn't know anything about the books you have. So we can feature books, right? Show features yeah. and books, and like maybe ask you what books you have. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we might want to have some kind of um, trending books, maybe, since you don't have any info of what they, you don't have any history of what they've been doing. Yeah. Are you signed in, even? Yeah, that's true, that's true. So we're kind of looking, that's some kind of a system to help you get going, I suppose. Um, we'll have some books in some way, about new stuff, but then have a hint to the user that they can read more yeah. information and make it better. Maybe it's going well. That's true. And what about when we come back to this app once we've already populated it? So that's going to be our default view, I think. Um, Yeah, 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 that's good. I think the first thing we want to think about here are the, the main types of content that we have. Um, so I'm going to turn to my text editor here. So we're going to have uh, books you've read. We're going to have books that you want to read. Let's call that the reading list. And finally, there's going to be a whole collection of books out there that you 
could have read or might not have read. I guess that's like a fairly same way to organize it. So um, that would be the library set. So books, on, books you own. Okay. I've got five minutes here, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to work fast. So we've got a library. I've got my reading list. So these are our three kinds. And what I'm using here is a view switcher, which, lo and behold, we also have a pattern on. It tells you. View switcher, view switcher. Right, okay, so here we go. This tells us about view switches. It's useful when you have different subsets of concepts and to switch between them. It's useful. Okay, so we've loaded up our app. We've got a library of books. We'll click on a book. Click on a yeah, details about that book. Right? So, gone into it. So here we're using a standard pattern for, for navigating. Um, uh, so we've got a few tricks here in Inkscape, again, like to make the process quicker. Um, one thing that we have is on our icons. <laughs> so uh, we want to go back. Oh no. Let's try that again. Is this actually the icon I've got? Yes. Okay, so now we're going back. And we've got the book title here. Does that say book? Can't <laughs> <laughs> type. Something to do with being under pressure. <laughs> Okay, so, and we might want to have the, the cover here. So, uh, cover. And we probably want like a synopsis. Oh, I don't have any lips on. Uh, okay. Alan, stop pretending you're not seeing me. I'm not, I'm, I'm designing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we're starting to build the skeleton of our app anyway. Uh, and we've got two minutes left, so we can, we've got this library here, you can look at the books, we can probably search <coughs> to find different books and authors, you can search button, and if you wanted to learn more about designing search, oh, look, in the Higgins section of search. <laughs> um, how do we indicate that we've read a book, or how do we indicate, how do we mark these books, or... Uh, to say we've read them or to say that we've liked them. Oh, you say that we hated them. Yeah. Stars, do we want to say stars, that we hate them? Stars. 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 Mm. Thin label. Thin label. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, we have stars over here, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just use those for now. But um, yeah, we can have a little line of stars under the, under the book here. That could be kind of nice. <laughs> That information is also going to feed your friends, like the things you will be recommending to them, right? Yeah. So that's good to have visible for the service itself. <clears throat> so we've got we've got a kind of growing, got the skeleton of an app here that's kind of starting to take shape. And this is probably rubbish, and you're going to throw it away and start it again, and you're going to do that several times over. The point of the exercise isn't that we've created a UI using Inkscape. The point of the process is that we've uh, identified some goals. <coughs> we've done some research. We started to experiment with <coughs> UI ideas based on, on that. And we, at this point, you know, we're, whenever we're doing this work, we ought to be trying to go back to our objectives and thinking about so these. So people, we want dynamic recommendations. Okay, so maybe we want to add some kind of dynamic content element to the top here, which says like... Trending books here. Yeah. Okay, they're going to drag me off stage now. <laughs> uh, 
So anyway, I hope this has been interesting and useful. Um, oh, it's been interesting. <laughs> and um, if, if you want to know any more about this stuff, you know, we're always looking for new people to work on design. Uh, we're looking for uh, people to do internships on design, and we're happy to mentor you, and you can learn more about this process. Like that. So, that is the end of this rather refreshing experience. <laughs>